probably have 1100 hours. Do you have any questions before we start talking? Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about a few things. First of all, I have a question. What do you think is the big, other than having no engine, what is the biggest aerodynamic difference between this and what you used to fly? Or how would you anticipate it being different to fly? Well, we're sitting in front of the wing. That would be different. Or you see the wings right over the top of us or In fact, if it was single seater, the nose would be there. And uh -huh. this is the unnatural seat. The pilot seat, well, this is the pilot seat. Okay. But we have to put people in the front because uh, that's where you solo, because of weight. Right. And if it's a ride, it's just a better view up there. But you'll find when you finally get go from here to this seat, wow, that seat's a better seat. Is it? Because you're in the CG, you feel everything. You can see the wings out your peripheral vision. In this one, you're sitting out in front of everything. That's that's an issue. But aerodynamically, it doesn't make much difference. Anything okay. else? Well, the 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 nose wheel, you know. I mean, I guess you would have a yeah. You got nose wheels. The older planes had skids. Yeah. And now anything higher performance is a tail dragon, like that with no nose wheel. But yeah, the nose wheel makes it much easier for us to teach and to solo people along. All right. Um, aerodynamically, the big difference is the long wings. Oh yeah. At slow speeds, because when we turn, the difference between these two wingtips is much greater than the difference between your Mooney wings, because at slow speeds. I mean, this one might be going almost twice as fast around a tight turn. So that does affect a lot of things. And do you remember adverse yaw? Uh -huh. Tell me what you, what you remember of that. Because well, a lot of people don't really remember that. The propeller would be turning the plane. Is P that what we're talking about? Well, that, I guess not. Adverse uh. yaw, you know what yaw is. Yeah. Adverse yaw is when, if you deflect the aileron only, you go like that. Well, okay, it creates lift on this wing, right. and it creates more drag. So it'll bank this way, but it'll turn that way. And that's not what we want. Well, in your Mooney, that's such a minor thing, you probably hardly ever thought about using your pedals in a turn. Do this. Well, we fly with our feet. I mean, like 80%. You can use the ailerons the same way, but you use them very little, and you fly with your feet. And that, at first, for a guy like you, it's going to take you a while to remember. I have to keep reminding you, I'll use your feet, and don't move the sticks on it. I just flew four flights of that jet out. Same, same story, same story. And he, he'll verify. So, why would you be? And so, to make a, a normal turn, it would be pedal the stick, and then immediately, as soon as it looks right, center both. Center the control. And then maybe a little back pressure so the nose doesn't go down. And then to roll out of the turn, again, pedal and stick, but it's mostly pedal and very little stick. So that fundamental difference is there every time you try to turn. Okay. Or even just try to hold course. Because if you if you end up trying to hold course by steering with the stick, you're holding course like this. If you use your feet, it goes straight. Um, we do a lot of circling, though, because that's not required for climbing, but if it's an area of updraft is limited, you circle to stay in. So circling like birds is a common uh, activity for us. And when you're in a constant rate bank with this very long wing at moderately slow speeds, sometimes this wing just starts to drag back. So in the turn, you may need to keep add a little bit of rudder just to keep it going around the turn. I mean, take, take these wings off, and what does that remind you of? A dart. And it's, without the wings, it's designed to go straight, not turn. Okay, can you direction? Also, if you're in a constant rate turn, this wing is constantly creating more lift because it's faster. Again, by quite a bit faster. So this wing is always going to want to go higher. So when you're in that turn, you may need to have rudder into the turn and stick away from the turn just to balance it and keep it coordinated. And that's it's natural, but it'll feel clear to you just because you sure, yeah. just And then we have it. the string on here that has been pulled off. There's a string, mm -hmm. trails. 
and it's your turn and bank. So if you, uh, it should be straight when you're making a turn. But if you make a slipping turn like this, the string will trail out like this. And that's all right. It's an error, but it's, it's innocent. Right. If you make a skidding turn like this, the string will trail into the turn, and that's a sign that you're doing the wrong thing. And because in gliders, in, you know, the glider we're flying is spin-proof. It really is. But the earlier gliders, because of this long wing problem, they were spinners. And if you skid your turn to final approach and you stall this way, and you're dead. Mm. And so for that reason, skids, turning with excess rudder, is just not allowed in gliders. If you skip one turn on your check ride, you bust. You just don't skip. It's okay to slip, even if it's a mistake. But no skidding turn. That's an issue. Um, that may be all we need to talk about aerodynamics. I will discuss one thing for the toe, and I'll be flying the toe. What we find is, <coughs> even if you're brilliant, if you haven't towed yet, you can't. And so it's the hardest part to learn. So, Even though it's easy enough to do, it's hard to learn. So you're going to want to observe my toe, and I'll point out something. We need to always match his bank. So if he's in a two-degree bank, then we're not. We're going different directions. So the top of your instrument panel is flat in this plane. Just put it level with the toe plane's wings, whatever. Even if you're out of position, you want to match his bank. Um, so if we're in a turn, when he starts his turn, he'll pull this left wing faster, and it'll start to go up. And so I won't, and he, this will happen on this very flight, when we take off and he starts his, his departure turn, I will not initiate bank, but it'll happen. What I'm going to have to do is now start using left stick to prevent over banking. That's another issue that's just not intuitive. No. And I'll point it out and you'll see the evidence clear. Then just, yeah, we just stay with him. Even if we're out of position, we just don't match his attitude and he'll pull us back into position. I may show you a couple uh, secondary things on the toe, advanced stuff that would be on your 10th lesson or something. But that's probably all we can talk about other than the soaring part, and we can talk about that in the end. Okay. Now, after all that, do you have any questions now? Um, how long would it take to get a get qualified? Okay. I always have to answer this question, and I hate to. And that course it depends. Huh? Yeah, it depends on a lot of things, and I have found that age is the single biggest variable for student pilots. I'm 64, and if I was starting now, I it would take a long time. But you already have some previous training. You go for water. Yeah. And so that'll help. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you had 1,100 hours helps a lot. If you had four or 500 hours, it wouldn't help much. Um, also, on that question about about getting the rating, this is one kind of flying where you can have the rating. You, you can force it and get your rating by tomorrow night. But you wouldn't know how to stay in the air. And in this kind of flying, if you can't levitate and keep the plane up, you don't need a license. So our strong advice is don't concentrate on getting the rating, concentrate on learning the art. Yeah, getting the rating will fall in your pocket when you're ready. But back to your question, uh, I would guess if you have average talent, not superior or inferior, with your prior experience, you, and you, if you did instruction every week, you could complete your rating in six months or so. Okay. Uh, and I've seen 15 year old kids figure it out in 30 seconds. But that's just our scene. <laughs> um, now about the lift, uh, we'll have a lot to talk about when we're up there. And it's a fine story. So uh, we'll share stick time. You'll get some, but I, I'll have to fly it to show you what to do. That's fine. Right. Any other question? Okay. Okay. You have a good flight? Yeah. Is that your first? Yeah. Not your last? No. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Am I going to six?
Yes. Stay in your place. Have fun. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I'm allergic to light. I have to cover up all like even this. Wow, allergic to it. Allergic, huh? I didn't know it until I moved here. Yeah, well. My skin attacked me. The heat here too doesn't help, I'm sure. Yeah. How long have you lived here? Hmm? How long have you lived here? I first moved here in ninety five, so it's been twenty years off and on. Huh? I'm gonna take this golf cart. We can all sleep on the front. Okay. okay. Yeah, I moved here in 1970. Really? Yeah. Where exactly? Uh, well, I was in Lancaster, N12 and 20th. But I've been in a lot of different places. Right now, we live right over here on Juniper Hills. Oh. Juniper Hills, yeah. By double, right by Double Spongebob. I've been flying for too long in New England, but the weather's is always bad. And I did research. Before I ever had internet, I did research to find the best soaring site for year round. Uh -huh. This is the place. Really? The really? best place in North America for year round. Where were you in New England? Vermont. I grew I'm up in New there. York. But, uh, yeah, it's warm. Yeah, I kind of like snow. These two planes superficially look alike. They're totally different manufacturers. They are similar airplanes, but they're different. We're going in this. Okay. So that way I can look for when you're coming in. Okay. Uh, there'll be a red number under our right wing. Okay. Okay. I'll look for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I think I was recording the whole time there. Oh. Probably hope I don't run out of film. Yeah. I will fly on the backup turtle. When you're soaring, having the proper speed within two or three knots is critically important to good results. You can fly whatever speed, but if you don't fly the appropriate speed, you don't climb good and you don't get anywhere. So I'm always flying carefully about my airspeed, but I never look at the airspeed indicator. I just never look at it. Okay. Because I, I, am, I just always decide, should I go faster or slower? And that's good enough for me, and it works because I've taught myself to fly without the instruments. But this outer ring, this is your VSI. Uh -huh. Glider pilots call this a variometer or vario. Uh -huh. It's a little different because it's, for one thing, it only goes to 1,000 feet per minute. But also, it's dampened so that it doesn't jump around a lot. This outer ring is telling you what speed to fly. It should be centered. The index pointer at zero. If the needle is down here, it's saying go that speed. That's the one part of the panel that I advocate you use. Go that speed to maintain level flight? No, or to, to maximize the glide. Maximize here's the, the point. Okay. If you're in rising air, fine. But if you're in sinking air, you'll get a flatter glide by lowering the nose and going faster. So it's like you're already losing money, so invest uh -huh. to get away from it. And then, oh, that's pure lift. Dust Devil! Close your canopy! Ah, that's just beautiful. It's, it's ugly, but it's beautiful. <laughs> and if you're in the air, you dive toward those things, uh -huh. and they throw you along. Now, what was I saying? Uh, we're talking about uh, 
the variometer and uh, trying to fly at whatever speeds on the outer ring. Yeah, like I finished that point. Okay. Uh, we're probably ready to move on. And we have another tow plane will be back real soon. We'll tow them and then another one's going to pick us up. Uh, what was that? I just... Oh, well, one thing I do need to say, if I ask you to adjust the volume of the radio, it's just this one button. Try not to even touch that with your knuckle because you might change frequencies. Okay. And I'll use the radio just for the calm, you know. Okay. There's a trim right down here. The green lever. Uh huh. That's a trim, and there's the indicator, the red mark. Okay. And we'll probably want it about there. But when you're flying it, if you have pressure and you just want to relieve the pressure, just move the trim. This, that's what it's for. Okay. The rudder pedals, are they too far away? They're quite a ways away, yeah. Uh, give you speed back. Try that. Is that perfect? Feels pretty good, yeah. Okay. This is the tow release for our tow hook. Okay. Don't pull it unless we ask you to. And this is the brake. See the uh, that's spoiler. This this handle does that. Okay. And the wheel brake both. Huh? Okay. And if wheel brake's good enough, I can touch down and smoke the tire if I want to. You have that back there with you, oh, though. I have everything back there but control of the radio. Including the tow release? Yes. Okay. And you don't want to be pushing on that, that's the radio. Okay. So you're strapped in. Feel quite quite comfortable? Yeah. I'm going to close the lid so you get a sense what that feels like. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, a little detail. These will close to latch your canopy, both. But don't do that until I've latched mine, for reasons I can discuss later. Okay. While we're waiting, I'm going to tighten these screws. This plane's three years old, but yeah, these these things get loose often. I don't have a good screwdriver handy. It's not going to fall off, but that that should be tighter right there. Okay. And do ask any questions as soon as they come up. As soon as that's moved, he's going to come pick us up and pull us onto the road. Okay. Who's the young girl that's uh, helping out there? Her name is Alike. Yeah, she's one of my students. Oh, really? Yeah, I teach English over here at the... Uh, oh. I, I saw her one time, I was about a year ago, I was out here and I said, oh. Yeah, yeah. she's taking pre-med at uh, Northridge. Oh, good for her. She's a wonderful kid. Very smart, yeah, she was an honor student. Okay, now I'm just going to take a picture of you as I'm videoing. Okay. Videoing. So let's talk about the, the lift. Okay. First, My first day as a glider student. They're talking about lift on the wing, but then lift in the air. There's two kinds of lift, aerodynamic and atmospheric. I wish we had different words. Yeah. But the atmospheric lift is thermals, you know, warm bubbles. Right. And there's other kinds, but today it's mostly about that. And then here at this location, one of the reasons it's a great site is we often have marine air coming in, meeting the desert air, and when they come together, it all goes up. So those mountains are not just a great place for a lot of things, they're also usually where there's converging I'm going to start climbing in. Okay. And if you, if you need to be tighter, just... Okay. Yeah. The won't be very rough. I'm going to, I'm going to call a like over here? No, it's okay. I, okay. I'll, probably, I'll see her before, probably, before we leave. Yeah, smile. Huh. Oh, that's not her, that's her sister. Oh. Oh, did you need something or? No, no. I was just telling uh, Dale that uh, Alik was one of my students. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Like, you know her, yeah. her sister Eileen. That's, that's I don't, who we were looking at. I'm not, I'm not sure if I do or not. I don't remember. She's 17 now, I think. Yeah. So do she, me a favor. Hold your elbow here and then hold your hand here. Just prevent it from closing. Oh, oh, that's it. Just hold it. Could you grab that lumbar for me? Yeah, you got it. Give it a good grip there, so it won't. Yeah, it's, oh. Yeah, it's no lumbar. Hey, you got a lumbar back there? That's all right. Yeah, I do. I got it. Okay. Fine. Go ahead and let me go out. Uh, we're uh, 
20,000 feet? Did he say 20,000 feet? I think he said seven. Oh. Okay, Dan, I gotta move people. Bye bye. And your name's Dan? Yes, sir. So do ask any questions. Okay, the brake just moved forward. Is that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sure. As an educator, I'm sure you understand. I want my students to ask questions. Right. If they don't ask questions, I worry about it. Oh, look at that dust devil over to the right there. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's starting to happen everywhere. Sure enough, 2 o'clock. That's what it usually happens. Can you see him up, up high? Historically, if, this, if we had a human climate, this would be a thunderstorm. So are you getting downdrafts on the other side of that, or? Uh, all the way around it. All the way around it. See, think of it this way, a thermal is like a mushroom. It goes up in the middle and it descends on the outside. And those dust elements, that's a little different species, but it's the same. Uh, uh, pull back a little, Eric. done my quick and dirty checklist but I'm going to quickly uh, narrate it for you. This microphone here? Just it, keep it out of your way. Okay. And don't touch that push button on the top of the stick. Got it. Altimeter set, belt's good, controls free and clear, cable hook, canopy's locked, dive brakes are locked. He's going to level the wing and as soon as the rope is straight we wag our pedals for takeoff. This is the takeoff okay. Now I'm on two wheels. Keeping the wing level and steering with my feet. Now we're on one wheel. The plane just lifts in the air. Now if it touches back down, I won't do anything about it. Control jump taken. I'm going to be walking around overhead there too. So make right hands on wind for a little bit of control. Landing for an aborted takeoff and emergency landing. What do you think so far? Very smooth. I do this so much, it always seems weird to take off in an airplane that's not being pulled. Yeah. I imagine. Actually, I've, I've done this for a living for over 30 years. Never had it officially, never had it unless it was a helicopter. Is that right? I flew them enough to know I wasn't interested. Now you didn't do that, it just happened. Okay. Now I 
I try to stay in the back level with him so he's in the back of the right. And I'm straight behind him, pointing outside of the turn. This is proper technique. Those little hills in Lake LA are lower than this airport. Really? Yep. What is the elevation? 3,400. Did he know you were going to drop off right then? No, he didn't. Oh. And I shouldn't have gotten off that soon. But I felt so good, now I have to pay the price. This is a sport after all. Right. And I, uh, I'm pretty uh, unabashed about the sporting attitude. What happened to our thermal? Did it go? We just flew back into it. Okay. When I turned away from the tow plane, I flew out of it. But now we're in it. Okay. And now I need to stay in this turn and begin climbing. We're obligated to turn right away from the tow plane. Right. And when I did that, we lost the lift. So I had to go back and find it. And now we're climbing slowly. And as we go up, the thermal will get bigger and stronger. Well, it may, it should. It may not. But most thermals get bigger and stronger. And we can Bigger meaning fatter, I mean... Fatter and stronger. Now, this is not the dust devil that I saw that I wanted to tow to. Right. And it's now gone, but it's straight ahead of us about a mile. And I really think maybe this lift and that lift are a part of a line of lift. So as soon as this climb weakens, I'm just going to head south on what I think is the line of lift. Okay. And it's important to point out that this entire thing, you know, there, there's some science involved, but for the most part, our moment-to-moment -moment decision making is just improvisational, creative thought. Just trying to imagine what it's doing and what to do about that. We've already climbed 500 feet off the road, and we're climbing 500 feet a minute or more. Does it certainly feel okay? Yeah, it feels fine. Okay. Now, let me talk about what I'm actually doing right now. And you should be following me, by the way. Okay. Um, to stay in this lift, we need to have a perfectly round circle. And for a perfectly round circle, we need a constant attitude. But the thermal is trying to disrupt our attitude. It's pushing us all over the place. So everything I'm doing right now is intended to hold this attitude and keep us in this one place. I'm resisting everything the air is doing. That's why I'm using both pedals. I'm just trying to hold the attitude and our climb is increasing. Our climb rate is increasing. We've already gained a thousand feet. Wow. Isn't this amazing? Yes, it is. Well, you're in the best site in North America. So it ought to be amazing. Well, I'm amazed at what I'm not... I wish I could see what you're seeing. Well, I'm, what I'm seeing here is the horizon. Looking out the front, uh -huh. right you're right here, and just trying to hold attitude. And then I'm feeling it. Right. I, I, you can feel when the lift is stronger, and you can notice that when it feels stronger, it's louder as well. Because whatever our ambient noise level is, updrafts are louder, and downdrafts are quieter. So uh, now I'm happy that we got off early. So long as they don't make you airsick climbing like that. So far I'm good. I don't think I've ever gotten airsick. I get yeah. seasick, but I don't get airsick. Well, I guess it's the first time for everything. Well, this uh, this is called thermaling, the activity of circling in a thermal. And it's kind of like a white magic trick. At first, it just doesn't seem like it's possible. 
Yeah. And the more you do it, the more you suffer, the easier it becomes. Now, how high do we have to be to fly to those mountains? Well, the nearest real hill is about five miles. Which means I need a thousand feet of altitude to use to glide that far. And we're talking about the hills behind us here. Yeah. And so I'd like to go at least a thousand feet higher than this before leaving here. But if I have to leave here, I will. Take my chances with what happens out there. And when you hear me say taking chances, it's not chances with safety. It's just taking chances with easy success. Yeah. And like any sport, you have to take a chance or you don't get to play. <laughs> like any sport, if you don't want to be aggressive, you choose to be the loser. Okay, it got, got louder. Yeah. But notice how I'm using quite a bit of pedal now and then, but very little stick. Because in this turn, I'm using rudder for yaw, for roll, pitch, and yaw. Notice here, I'm going to give it right rudder just to lower the nose. Or left right to raise the nose. Much more of this will be high enough to just glide over the mountain. Who knows, you might end up higher there than we are here when we get to the ride. The thermals today are going roughly a mile higher than this. Really? And on a typical... 5,000 feet higher, so you'd be at 12,000. Yep. And if it were a more typical weather, it would be 14,000. Higher. I've actually thermal to 18,000 here. Really? You carry oxygen? Oh, well, we, we can. We don't have it right now. Okay, now we've lost our lift. I think it's still there. If I don't find it right here, we'll just move on. But I think that same lift is right here on the right. And I still suspect that this is part of a line that runs to the south. So now I'm going to turn and get south. Okay. So we got off at about 47. So yeah, we've more than doubled our height above the surface. So now we're going to head straight for the... There's a fire road straight ahead of us. Here. Uh, the intersection up on top? Yep. We're going to go for that. Now we're still climbing. And you will get some good stick time now. And now I'm going to demonstrate the speed to fly concept where we go slow in updrafts and then in downdrafts go fast. We're getting fairly close to stall speed. We get lower in the nose. What is the stall speed? 35. Okay. And look at that. We're climbing 6 to 700 feet a minute. Wow. Yeah, this is a line of lift. This is a shear line. And I can almost promise you when we get back to the airport, there'll be a strong west wind. This is this is the terminal end of the west wind and it's marching in. Wow. I'm pretty impressed by the lift here. Yeah, I am too. I, mean, I don't know, I have nothing to compare it to, but. Now we're going to hurry over to that hill. Hill. Yeah, I think it might be time for you to take over now. I want you to fly straight and level right there. Fix up land parts and go straight. So those two dirt roads come together. You just want to go there. And use ample rudder and very little stick. You need to raise your left wing. Now let's go much faster, we're in downdraft. And we may have pushed down as far as we can. Maybe all sink ahead. We'll, we'll find out. When we get a south wind off the mountain, it's all downdraft over here. Now you're leaving that sink. When we leave it, we'll pull up. which is moderate, not very fast. Pretty good. Go about five degrees left and just continue. Just make a left, yeah, more pedal. Oh. And then when you roll out of this little curve, more pedal. 
Right pedal. Right pedal? Yeah. Okay. Now, once we're on the hill, I think we'll start, start finding good lift. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? No, no, I'm, um, I'm trying to think of a question. I'm. Right. We were sinking pretty fast, so it's good to be going fast. Let me go a little faster here. Now we're on the sunny side of the mountain, we'll probably start getting more thermal. There we go up. So yeah, I'm going to take over now. Okay. Once you've done climbing, I'll let you climb over. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Are you familiar with where we are right here? Yeah, pretty much. Center Canyon? Uh-huh. That bowl in the hill right there, we call that the chimney because it collects so much sunlight, it heats the air and the thermal bubble up out of it. Really? So we're going to go right there now, and I strongly expect a good thermal. I want to be a little bit downwind of it, so I'm not going over it so much until I think the thermal will be. You're going to get a bounce here. Uh-huh. Out the Is this a uh, prison down here? Yeah. So now we may have even more lift than before. Amplified by the terrain. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 800 feet a minute. That's not at all uncommon. In some locations you'll never see that. But here it's just horrible. Huh. So we've already regained the altitude we lost getting here, and we gained a thousand feet. We can jump on the big mountain. Jump on the what? The big mountain. Oh, okay. Need to get a little higher first. And that's happening. My personal benchmark, because I'm usually flying first thing in the morning, if I can gain 300 feet, I can probably stay up to the dark. Really? And now we're uh, 3,000 feet higher than our release. But again, notice how little I move to stick. Because first thing people do is start this. Right. And that just doesn't <laughs> help at all. I've only flown one stick plane, other than this one now. Um, it was a Satabria, I think. I'm gonna go left. It feels like more lift on that side. Well, starting exactly when I was a beginner pilot, I've been asking other pilots, do you prefer a yoke or a stick? And everyone says they prefer a stick. Why do they even put the yoke in there? I'm sure it feels more like flying. Well, it feels more like riding. Riding, okay. And uh, it's nice to not have something between your legs. Yeah. Especially a crash. But that shouldn't be the main point. And if above 8,000, a little higher we'll head for the big knot. You still feel fine? I'm feeling great. Hard not to. <laughs> Have you ever flown in this local area? No. Well, I flew out of Fox Field, but I never, I really would stay away from the mountains. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the mountains are the whole game for the right of the The bigger the better. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing to be able to do that. The only thing better than these mountains is the air. It's so much bigger. So now, we're headed toward 
that's Mount Lewis there ahead of us. And we're still climbing. As soon as the climb quits, I'm going to dive toward that mountain to get there higher. This is Mount Lewis? Yeah, Mount Lewis. And it, there's one peak ahead of us, is the single best source for a thermal for maybe 60 to 100 miles. Because the other side is a dark rock facing the afternoon sun. So now we're going to rise above it. This airplane, 90 to 100, is pretty fast. You can go 140, but that would just be a dive. But gliders use pretty much the whole speed range, and they also use the whole envelope in terms of attitude. Very interesting. For us, a 60 degree bank isn't all that steep. Now, I'm going to lower the nose and really attack the hill rather than sneak up on it. So I have the initiative, not the hill. I have the power to turn away if I need to. And I have the speed to zoom up when we get there. So I'm flying aggressively, but I'm flying smart. You ready for a pull out? This will be fun. Okay. Wow. Now we're in sync. That was amazing. But now off the top of this curve, this hill, there should be a, a thermal with several thermals combined. We'll see. Off of the marine, I mean the marine player, I mean the what is it? Well, it's just every, every side of this hill is hot and all the air is flowing up. So there should be a big thermal off the top, but I'm not finding it. Right on the right. This is all guesswork, and so sometimes an educated guess is just the wrong one. Yeah. The, the thermal may be coming off that little point. So I'm going to try it. But notice how quickly we climb this big mountain off of a low toe in the air. Six miles away, actually eight miles away from here. Ooh. Is that body in there, no. the bump? No, I just uh, not expect it. Well, you should expect it. Flying <laughs> in the mountains in the glider, you're going to get bounced around. Well, you know, that's the one thing I used to love about, I mean, I, to, a, to a certain degree, I would like a little turbulence. Yeah. More interesting. Yeah, I think maybe the mountains are shut down. We should have had a very good updraft there. We didn't find a thing that was down. Look how much down there is now. We're talking about upslope winds because we don't have much wind today. Right. But upslope winds, you can climb the whole mountain that way. So one more try here, and I'll just get up and go back to the desert. But you have to have a good look at these mountains. I've been a mountain pilot since my beginnings here, uh, or before here, and I feel more at home here than I do on the island. Does it seem like you're quite safe? Well, I wouldn't be honest if I didn't say it's kind of weird flying this close to the trees. Well, you haven't even seen it close. But I feel confident you know what you're doing. Close is inside of a wingspan. Oh. There's the other Okay, this is coming from both sides of this ridge. And so it might push either wing up because both sides are working. Uh huh. It's not the same rate. Great. This points out why a glider pilot wants to be on top of a hill or on top of a ridge if possible. Now we have to turn back because we can't get above it. But this point down here also might be a great kicker for a thing. Huh? It is. Yeah. Flying gliders at this great site. It's easy to look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> now I'm going to do a dive to the right, just so I can come back up sooner. Yep, 
this is mostly warm air rolling up the hill. Not a thermal, so much as just a sheet of warm air. Huh? And there's the engine. There's another one. And now we do have a little bit of wind blowing us right to left. And that's helping. And once we're on top of the big bridge, we should be able to once again have lift up both sides. So we're getting that last few hundred feet to the top of it. You feel fine? Yeah. I remember the, the night beast moved to the It was about 10 years ago. Really? I was in Lancaster. And this whole area right here was just glowing red. And then occasionally a tree would explode like a bomb. Yeah, that was the secret there. We're going to get off of that. It's just not working here. So, it's your time to fly. Okay. Uh, just take us out of the canyon any old way you'd like. And maybe make a few turns and get used to using mostly pedals. Anything you want to do. If you want to experiment, uh, you can't do anything that hurts the airplane. Okay. So, the only two things you don't want to do is hit something or go too fast. The spring in front of you, the forward end where the tape is, that's pointing, that's your ball. Okay. So, if the tree is trailing to the right, you need less pedal. I love it. So, if you had paid for that code, that would probably be 30 bucks. You could fly to the right. You fly all day after that. Yep. Uh, the code was intended to be a 5,000 foot code. And that would have been 100 bucks. Yeah, but it's uh, the other side of the road. I'll tell you what, don't you think you guys have a sound? We do need it. Anything you'd like to experiment with, join the airplane, you're free. The stall is extremely doubtful. You cannot spin. And, uh, the baby is open. If you go out towards the airport, you'll have lower rising air. Say again? If you go out towards the airport, you'll find that lift again. Okay. Beautiful. You've got to have to fly. You find these nose yawing back and forth, you just need more pedal. My house is right down over there. You know less hurdles? Say again? You know less hurdles? No, that name's vaguely familiar. He lives right there in the middle of that nearest block. He's a British uh, retired drummer. Oh. He's the, he's not the guy that uh, played with Cream, did was he? No, he was a retired bass uh, player. He's got to play with everybody for a while. Let's hurdle. I don't have to. The name sure sounds familiar. I know there's some guy. There was a guy in Crystal Air who was a drummer for uh, Eric Clapton, and maybe it was this guy. I don't know. Let's go a little faster. To do the downdraft. So people have flown uh, some. Now you can go up back in the lift. People have flown some hard glider for it in one hop. And to Texas. That's why it's 900 miles. And the world altitude record used to be in this valley, 49,000 feet. Really? But somebody broke it recently in Argentina by a thousand. You say somebody flew to Texas? Yep. Just hitting thermals the whole way? Oh, uh, no, he's usually more done stuff. Uh, 
Much fun, right? Yeah. The 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 Just back and forth, left and right, fix that with the pedal. Just don't bear to the left, bear to the right. Now keep it in the list. What's that airport out there? I didn't know there was another airport. There's three right ahead of us. Yeah. Actually four. The nearest one is Brian Branch. It's an ultralight strip, and on either side there's others. And way out where the white building is now, that's a great view field. Which is where they build and fly the credit. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah, all lift out here, so you're climbing, but whatever you're doing, you're going up. This plane weighs nearly 900 pounds. One of the peculiarities of this course, if you're going for speed or distance, you can fill the water with wings, fill the wings with water, and uh, raise your gliding speed. And then if you can't climb, you just dump the water. Do we have water in it? No, no. No. This is the point of the day. Most uh, racing sure, go. More pedals. What time do we need to be back for the next flight? Not too much. More pedal when you roll in than when you roll out. We're in the down draft, aren't we? Yeah, just go straight and we get back in the up again. Yeah, and resist everything you feel because every updraft is trying to push you into a downdraft. It's sort of like the opposite of a bug in the drain. You just resist the current. Yeah. Uh, ten thousand feet a minute. Yep. Uh, not the high go overhead. Two thousand feet overhead. Moving shoreline on the first ridge. So I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, Rick. Oh. Okay. Use more pedal. You need to go left. Oh, left? On the left, pushing you away. I see. If the lift pushes your wing up, you lean into it. Like that. You feel all that resistance, and your job is to push at it. And it takes you up. Amazing. I've been teaching this for 35 years and it's still amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, 
locally, you probably realize this is only about the second day of summer now. Yep, it's been a cold winter. Yep. So the one drawback at this great site is we seldom have cumulus to mark the upright. You gotta find them by trail. Most places these total marks in the cloud. Well, I know I wouldn't have no, I wouldn't have an, any idea of where to go. Whoa, what do we got here? Well, but hey, I don't either. <laughs> find it by flying into it. There it is. You find it. Now it's on the right. Lots of right riders. Red tail. There's a dust. Yeah. There it is. Yep. Yep. You can ride it way below. It's climbing in the same way. Which side? On the left now. Great. Another one of the fun aspects of this kind of flying, because we're slow and because we have very good visibility, we often fly very close together. I've flown close enough to, do, to use hand signals for the other pilot. Really? And in fact, if two pilots know each other, sometimes they can't resist getting into dogfights. <laughs> Since we don't have gunnery, it's just, uh, the object is to get on the other pilot's tail. Look at that lift ring. Wow. 9,000. Yeah. Glider right straight ahead on the horizon. Now 11 o'clock. I see two of them. One above the horizon, one below. Right. I haven't got either one. Let me take over. I'm going to hurry over to this nearest rider. Okay. That's another one of the beauties of this is we get to fly close enough to enjoy looking at this plane in the air. And he's pretty much straight ahead of us, below the horizon. Let's keep looking. Let's see him ahead. Oh, yeah, I got him. At the moment, I don't. He's coming at us, looks like, but he's way below us. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, maybe we'll find the other guy who's above the horizon. There, he's over there. About uh, 1.30. Yeah. Well, now we're high enough to get on top of the mountain. You want to go back in there? Sure. Okay. Well, we're going to have to go back there. Now, who knows? We may end up too low when we get there. But that peak in front of us is 8,000 or 95. That's Pallet Creek? I mean, Pallet Mountain? Uh, no, no, that's uh, Williams. Pallet's way out to the right. Many years ago? More than 30, maybe 40. Oh, yeah. It's a popular hiking. 
to the destination. We can call it the crash site. Look straight under. Straight down. Oh, yeah. Now, let's see if this is right here. But I still think maybe the mountains are shut down for the day. It's not a working day. But there's a southerly wind over here, so I ought to be on the south side of the hill to make it work. That's quite a rock down there. That's a mecca for a rock climber. I'll bet. Williamson Rock. Williamson? Williamson Rock. And you have to go from the road down into the canyon and climb back up to get there. Huh. So now we have a wind from right to left, but the thermals are shot. So we're going to make this one a good right now. So the wind is up slow where we are. It's not going to do very much for us. I thought there'd be some hikers away back here, but I don't see any. Alright, then it's time for you to take it back to the airport. Okay. I'll take the of you. Need to take me to Bravo. Did See the airport? Uh, not yet. Okay, got it. Yeah. Oh. Look at that monster dust all over there, about 10 miles. Oh yeah, beauty. Those are guaranteed great stuff. Hold your head, you can see. So, at this point, we've seen what we have to show you. But I would bet that there's more than we can expect. There's probably more fun than you've got, too. Well, you know, when I get ready for this, I read a book on gliding. So I knew it was a little bit of what to expect. And I saw your video. And I was, there's a guy that flies up in Utah a lot. Puts a lot of YouTube videos up. But it, I don't know. I was expecting you to feel bumpier. or It's really a very smooth experience. It's all different. What book did you read? It's not the, it's not the, gov I think it is the government one. I, it's been about a year since I've, I was going to do this about a year ago. It's a textbook? A textbook? No. It's, uh, what well, it is like a textbook, yeah, totally. I, I should have, I should have remembered, should have looked at it before I came out. I had back surgery last year, which kind of put it off for about six months there. You can fix that with your feet. Like that. See what happens is, because of that adverse yaw problem, if you do any steering this way, you can start wallowing back and forth. Right. And there's a whole lot, of course, that we haven't showed you on this flight. I'm just gratified that we got off low and climbed. The best that's the main point. Well, uh, I only took one glider ride here. We climbed in the thermal and I was hooked. Did you know about the San Andreas Falls here? About the what? San Andreas? Yeah. Yeah. Right here's the road here. The road up to the right. That's the fall line. What's that right there? Yeah. And then between here and that Palmdale Link. So in this black looking valley, I was one time below the level of the airport and didn't have to land. I got away. I was on about 300 feet of Elmerai's Lake. Really? Got away. I flew 100 miles before coming back home. Have you ever had to land out? Oh yeah. Uh, that you can control. You can fly to certainty enough if you don't have to do it. Or you can, you can elect to take chances. 
Now what's the standard approach for the airport? Well, we'll go to the top of the corner of it and do a right hand pass. You're flying well enough, I'll talk you through the land. Okay. We'll wave to the way high to do that right now. Oh, okay. She can take us out that way though. Northwest corner of the airport. So I guess okay. you were. <laughs> well, I was kind of always on it. Would you like to do any uh, gypsy do's and semi aerobatic stuff? Um, sure. Okay, well, I'll low speed. You tell me if it's too much. It's just so graceful in, in a glider. Aerobatics in a glider is just so graceful. exciting. Okay. <laughs> uh, you were at 25 knots and it didn't stop. Yeah. Yesterday I got down to 15. By just keeping the angle of the tack uh, One thing I will show you right quick. Uh, about this thing is slip. You know what slips are of course. Yeah. These, these things can slip a lot more than you're used to. Go the other way. And if we want, we can go a lot more than that. Just 
push it in really hard, you just make the plane fly sideways. I think the way to go right, right. Now, I'm going to make the call. Now, I'm going to make the call. Uh, yeah, I think I can talk you through the landing if you're willing to go real straight and only do what I tell you. I'll try it. Okay, well then you're on your 45 now. Okay. And keep the speed about where you've got it. Just ditch out the front. Right there. Ditch out the front. Don't raise the Keep the wing level on the this is all bad air here. We're sinking fast. We're keep some more speed. Steer with your feet. Right there. Right there. Go into the right there. Oh. By the way, single engine pilots have a heavy right foot. And you have to be symmetrical in the way. All this, all this sinking air is putting us a little bit low for our path. That's okay. The pattern includes some safety excess altitude. No, it is it's uh, unstable enough. I'm going to do the landing. Okay. Next time you get to it. That's fine. I'll That's just follow thing. you through. There's another stinger. I have to dive through this. Just to get to the airport higher. That was beautiful. a sweet landing because I, I tried to make my point of touching the end. It was. <laughs> and it turned out to be not a, a very well executed landing. You know, I, I found different. We were so much closer to the ground when we finally touched down. That's right. That's part of why I did it for you. There she is. 
I brought him back. <laughs> Yay! Just twist. Twist. Yep. Yep. That's it. She's coming at you with a camera. Uh oh. It was a very comfortable landing. Very comfortable flight. Amazing, yes. You got it. Say hi to everybody. Hello. <laughs> Did you have fun? Yes. Great. 